early on, I, I really didn't know specifically who would order lathe cut records from me. Some bands can make 300 copies of a record and sell them out super quick and it makes a lot of money for them and that's great, but a bunch of other people are putting out stuff that's just as worthy of being on a record, but they can't afford that overall investment. My name is Tyler Bisson and I run Audio Geography Studios in Bethel, Connecticut. I got started cutting records out of college. I had an internship with a master engineer who cut lacquers to be pressed. He helped me get the tools to start cutting lathe cuts and I've been cutting records for about three years now. A lathe is a machine that's built to cut grooves into a disc for playback on a record player. The cutting equipment is really specialized. A lot of it was salvaged from radio stations in the 60s and 70s when they had no need for cutting of mono discs anymore. They had new stereo equipment. Places either threw them out or gave them away to local people who just wanted to tinker around with them. And those usually sat in their basements for years and years until I went and bought them. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna make a lathe cut record. Uh, first thing I do is take the sheeting off the plastic. And this one's gonna stay a square. Uh, we're gonna cut grooves into it today. I'm gonna spray with some anti-static fluid. I load the audio files onto the computer. I have a specialized program with a bunch of uh, presets and effects that take the signal and process it for the cutting process. They're all things that I came up with after a bunch of months of working on it about how to make the record sound as good as they possibly can as far as dynamic range and frequency range and those sorts of things. The uh, turntable drives the overhead mechanism and keeps it rotating at a constant speed. I slowly move the cutting head over to the disc area, being careful not to drop it where there's no disc. Lower the needle onto the disc, crank the lead-in groove, and press play on the computer. Once I send the audio out of the computer, it goes into a recording console that I then use to distribute the signal to an amplifier and then to the cutting head that's attached to the lathe. It also sends another copy of the signal to my speakers in the studio so I can listen back. And off we go. We're cutting a record. Early on, I, I really didn't know specifically who would order lathe cut records from me. I knew that as someone who had ordered lathe cut records from someone else before, that there was a market for it. And I knew that it was, it was gonna be fun at the very least. And I knew that people like myself are in need of that type of thing. But I didn't know how far reaching and how outside of certain musical genres this particular lathe cut kind of phenomena would go. I wasn't really sure, I just kind of was trying to learn how to do something and I put my mind to it and did it. Oh cool, now, I'm, now I figured it out, like I can make a good record, that's awesome. Now where do I go from there? Like that was kind of the question. I mostly work with independent bands and labels who find me through the internet. They just Google search lathe cut records because they've either seen one before or the friends band had one made and I'm one of very few people that even come up in the search. Audio geography is my full-time job. Probably eight hours out of the day, I'm, I'm sitting in this room and I'm cutting records. Chances are that I'm cutting records, dubbing tapes, answering emails, and talking on the phone at the same time. Like to anyone who's interested or even doesn't know what they want, I can help them with a bunch of options. I like to be open and accommodating some bands can make 300 copies of a record and sell them out super quick and it makes a lot of money for them and that's great but a bunch of other people are putting out stuff that's just as worthy of being on a record but 
they can't afford that overall investment of a lot more money. So they come to me and they say, this is how much money I have, what can I get? And that's my favorite question to hear because I can just follow them up with, you know, you can get a beautiful picture disc or if you're trying to just not have a picture disc, you can just have a one-sided record or you can have labels, no labels, you can have covers, no covers, either way. You're just going to put something out that is much more limited, but in that way gains importance and significance, really.